Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to State of Play Live Reaction with Yong Yeah, August 6, 2020. So happy to see so many of you here already. Uh, if you're watching this from the YouTube archives, use the timer if you just want to dive right into, right into the show. Now, before we begin, we got to set, set some expectations here because uh, Sony and PlayStation have been very clear about what to expect in this uh, live stream. So here it is. Updates on upcoming PS4 and PSVR titles take the spotlight for this uh, August 6th State of Play. Uh, it's been a while, but State of Play returns this Thursday with a focus on third-party published games coming to PS4 and PSVR. We'll have a few PS5 game updates on third-party and indie titles you last saw in June's PS5 showcase. So I wanted to make all of that clear before you expect a two-hour-long God of War presentation, God of War 2, or some crazy uh, Knack 3 epic reveal. We all, I know we all want Knack 3, but, you know, we got, we got to set some expectations, lest we be too disappointed, you know what I mean? But, this is going to be 40 minutes long, from, from what I understand, and, you know, that there are possibilities like, uh, I don't know, some people are hoping for Elden Ring, maybe? That'd be kind of cool, but... I'm going to keep my expectations relatively low-key for this. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to try to hype myself too much, because it does seem like this is more of a low-key showcase, but I don't know. Uh, it's 40 minutes long, so there might be a, a good amount of stuff shown, you know, uh, and PS4 is going to stick around for a bit longer. It's not like it's going away after PS5 launches. And so I'd be curious to see what sort of games we can look forward to, especially from third parties. Maybe they'll have some cool announcements here and there. Maybe they'll have some cool showcases of games that have been announced but haven't sh haven't been shown too much of. So keep that in mind, ladies and gentlemen, as we uh, yeah, as we look forward to this event. Just uh, oh, there we go. Let's maximize this. Are we starting? Wow, they're starting a little... Oh, wait, wait. Show starts in uh, nine minutes. Okay, cool. Well, we got some people... Uh, the Super Chat already. Um, let's see. Uh, Oregon9581. After I read that they will not announce pre-orders and price, I was disappointed. Uh, this stands still with Microsoft needs to end. I mean, yeah, I, I do wish we'd know price and stuff by now, but, um, you know, we'll see what happens. Uh, let's see, it's August, uh, well, it's August, um, uh, September, October, November, so, uh, it's expected that the next-gen consoles will launch within, within the span of, uh, three months, so somewhere, like, in November or maybe a little before then. And, uh, yeah, it's kind of crazy that we haven't seen any kind of price point for it yet, but maybe next month? We'll see. I do wish... I, I, I am expecting, you know, $500 within that range. Um, like, the full digital version of PS5 is probably going to be maybe 450 and then the uh, PS5 with the disk drive is probably gonna be, um, yeah, 500. That's what I'm expecting. First, Phil, I expect a God of War impression from you. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine if they uh, show God of War 2 here? It's not gonna happen. I, I shouldn't have said that, because that's already setting expectations. I'm telling you it's not gonna happen. No major PS5 announcements or first-party announcements in this state of play. So, uh, keep that in mind. And I'm gonna say this one more time before the event begins, because I know people will, will get a little too hyped for this. For those who are just joining us, this state of play will focus on third-party PS4 and VR games. Uh, no major PS5 announcements. They're going to show some, I think, indie PS5 games have already announced. But that's as far as PS5 stuff goes. This is a PS4 presentation. But, again, I'm curious to see maybe if we'll see, I don't know, like Elden Ring, which is a current-gen game. Um, no doubt it will come to next gen as well, but, uh, it has been announced for current generation consoles as well, so it'd be cool if, you know, maybe they surprised us with a little teaser or a bit of gameplay of that or something, like, maybe, like, I feel like that's the best we can hope for. 
again, I'm not gonna expect us to be the hypest of gameplay presentations and, or anything like that. Uh, Bird Bones, have you played Fall Guys? And if so, your thoughts? I have not, but I'm curious to try it soon because a lot of people seem pretty hyped about it or they seem to have, be having a lot of fun. From what I hear, it's basically Takashi's Castle Battle Royale, which sounds amazing. Um, and the, the game's just gaining a, a whole lot of traction on social media, uh, drawing a whole lot of players. Uh, is, is it on Steam right now? Steam Fall Guys. Let's see if... Uh, Steam charts. Fall Guys. Let's see how well it's doing right now. Yeah, I don't see it here. Um... But apparently it was like number one on Twitch for a while and stuff. So, you know, it's doing pretty well. And uh, a lot of people seem to be having a lot of fun with it, so. Uh, your boy Daddy Cynical says, First live stream I'm, I'm catching on time. Glad to finally hop in one of these bad boys. Hell yeah, man, welcome. I'm glad you can make it. We still got five minutes left till we begin. So, uh, yeah, settle in, get comfortable, and let's hang out. Uh, let's see. Holy Cross 9. I hope there is a teaser for Injustice 3. Uh, there's... Uh, has there been indication that there's a Injustice 3 in development? Injustice 3. Let's see what the internet has to say about this. I don't know. It seems unlikely that that'll happen. There's just no rumblings about that. No rumors or just nothing. Unless they really kept it under wraps. So I, I wouldn't expect that, but that'd be cool. Hmm. Uh, Kevin Tit says, Young, I'm looking for a new monitor for next gen. Could you do a video going over your top picks or just tell me what you use right now? Um, well, what, I, what I'm using right now is a, an Asus. Uh, I don't know if they're selling these anymore. Let me uh, go to my Amazon orders right here. I, I did order these on Amazon. So, um, let's see, what am I using right now? Let's see. What I'm personally using, this is these. I'm using three 2K monitors, um, 165 hertz. Uh, the ROG Swift, 27 inches, three of them, uh, with G-Sync. That's been my go-to for the past like two years. But you know, I might update my monitors down the line. Uh, I don't know if that will fit your needs. I mean, if you're looking for 4K, I you know. I cannot help you there currently, because, you know, I just, uh, yeah, I'm not, like, into tech news, per se. I'm more into game news, you know. But I hope that helped a little. Uh, John Milliman says, dude, love your voice acting in that anime trailer. Is there going to be more? Oh, yeah, there's going to be more. Um, yeah, there's some stuff I'm working on. Um, but yeah, I appreciate that. For those who don't know, there's this Warframe, uh, fan anime that I voice, and, and it's a, like a four minute long anime short, and the animation for that is some of the best I've ever seen in a 2D animation period. Like the fight choreography in there is amazing. It's called Warframe Proteus. I'd recommend you check it out. Uh, and I voice one of the lead characters for that, you know, anime short. And it was just, I was really excited to be a part of that because uh, the work itself was so cool and it's Warframe and yeah, I don't know. Uh, I, it's getting a lot of traction and people seem to be really enjoying it. Uh, Eric Washman, hoping for a Sly Cooper remake trilogy. Again, that'd be cool. I'm not gonna hope for too much in this showcase, uh, but that's a that's a good one. Uh, Jake Off uh, says, is Fallout 76 the worst game of the decade? Uh, there are far worse games than Fallout 76. As far as AAA games and in terms of the standards we expect go from the AAA landscape, though, it's certainly down there as among the worst, I'd say. Uh, la la la. Tristan Mitchell, hey, I hope everything's going well. Don't you find it a bit odd that it's August and we haven't seen a reveal for Call of Duty yet? Um, you know, I think we would have seen it at E3, but with E3 being delayed and canceled, yeah, not delayed, full on canceled, uh, everyone's kind of taking their time with their announcements. And with how fast word spreads on social media, you know, I feel like they can't actually afford to take their time. So there's enough time left. Uh, that I think, uh, you know, uh, yeah, they, they, they can afford to take their time with it. 
Matt, Th uh, Matt Thornton says, uh, though unlikely, I'd hope we get to see what Deck 9 games have been working on. Deck 9 games. Who's that? Oh, the Life is Strange folks. Um, or Life is Strange Before the Storm. No, wait. They worked on... So this is a like a spin-off or something? Yeah, it's a standalone story. Oh no, they're full on the, the folks who did Life is Strange, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, ch -ch -ch. Yeah, it's, I'm not super familiar with the Life is Strange series and the developers. Uh, but, yeah, uh, they're working on a new game now, I believe. And that was uh, announced some time back. Let's see. Uh, there's a Wikipedia here with a... Oh, we got a minute left. Oh wait, Deck 9, let's see. Okay, no, they did work on a standalone. So I guess they're not the core developers of Life is Strange. Yeah, I don't know what they're working on. Anyway, getting sidetracked here, but uh, yeah, I'm not sure. All right, so we got 30 seconds before we begin. I'm going to remind you all again, for those who just joined in, this state of play is going to focus on PS4 and VR titles. No major PS5 announcements here. Um, so just, you know, temper your expectations before we delve into this. Uh, Sony and PlayStation have been very candid about what we're going to see here uh, in terms of uh, whether we're going to see PS5 stuff or not. We're not. Uh, let's see. I missed a couple of uh, messages. My apologies. Uh, Clip uh, the Chameleon says, Hope you're having a swell day. I hope you all are too, and I hope this brightens your day a little bit. Here we go. Let's see what they have in store for us. Hope the volume's okay. Alright. What will they open up with? Okay, crash! This is Crash Bandicoot 4. Hey everyone, I'm Lou Stutter, producer at Toys for Bob, and I'm here to talk to you about Crash Bandicoot 4. It's about time. This is a good opener. Crash 4 is a direct sequel to Crash Bandicoot Warped. The this looks villains, pretty cool. The Neocortex and Dr. Entropy have finally escaped their interdimensional prison, leaving an evil scientist-sized hole in the universe. Now they've got their eyes set on not only simply conquering this dimension, but all dimensions. And it's up to Crash and Coco to save the day. The animations Crash are Bandicoot very lively. About time I like that. The first totally new game in the Crash Bandicoot series in over a decade. So for us at Toys for Bob, we felt that it was important to reintroduce longtime fans as well as new players to this amazing franchise. First, we made sure to incorporate the classic tense, precise, and perspective-shifting platforming that we all fell in love with. And then we wanted to introduce exciting new elements that we can't wait to show you today. Let's start with Insanity Beach. This is where Crash's adventure first started and where we picked things up again in Crash 4. But there have definitely been changes since we first saw Insanity Beach all those years ago. And look at this, and a decent Crash amount of gameplay 4, being shown we'll here. see those changes to our gameplay and even our art style. Our art teams wanted to take inspiration from not just the original games, but the animated cartoons that inspired those original games all while also delivering bigger, more awe-inspiring dimensions to explore. Throughout Crash 4, you'll see wide open new vistas, new character models, and lots of expressive animations. Yeah, and I'm impressed by that, the expressiveness of this game. Platforming, like having the ability to wall run, rope swing, it harkens to old school gameplay, but well. also like has enough modern elements to stand trilogy, on its own. Specifically Crash Warped, there were certain moments in the game where Crash would change outfits. Think Crash wearing a biker jacket when riding a motorcycle. That seemed like a natural area for us to expand upon. So we have loaded the game with tons of awesome skins that you can earn and wear throughout the game. These skins are totally cosmetic and a fun way to express yourself while playing the game. And just to be clear, there's no MTX here. The skins <laughs> nice. are earned by completing different challenges and earning gems within levels. It's good for them to clarify Crash that. Also introduces there were rumors the about masks, microtransactions. The they denied it on Twitter. They're denying space. it again here. Crash and Coco will good need stuff. their assistance throughout the game to tackle the crazy challenges that we're going to be throwing at the player. Whether it's Ika Ika, who gives you the ability to instantly flip your center of gravity at the press of a button. Kapunawa, who allows you to slow down the world around you. Ooh. 
Okay. Or Lonnie Loli, who allows you to phase shift elements in and out of existence. Bending the rules of reality and altering your environment with these new masks is a must. This looks we super fun. We also can't wait to talk to you about the fourth mask, Akano, but that's going to have to wait for another day. What we can tell you today, though, is that Crash isn't the only character you get to take control of during this adventure. For starters, you can play the entire game as Coco. Any level that you can play as Crash, you can also play as Coco. It was also very important for us that she take a more prominent role in the story this time as well. But that's not all. We've got a few other characters that you'll get to control at key points in the adventure so that they can provide their own fresh perspectives and new gameplay. Here you can see that you'll be taking control of Neocortex. He's all about using his blaster to... Yeah, that's pretty cool. I don't, has that ever been a thing? In, his path. in addition to playing as Cortex, we're excited to reveal that for the first time, you'll also get to tail slap your way through crates as Dingo Dial. I repeat, you get to play as Dingo Dial in Crash 4. Now, a lot has changed in the years since we last saw Dingo Dial. In fact, he hung up his old flamethrower rocket launcher combo when he decided to vacuum now. from a life of villainy and open a diner. Unfortunately for Dingo, fortunately for us, his adventure begins by witnessing the destruction of said beloved diner and getting sucked into another dimension. <laughs> Finally, there's one more surprise Whoa. I'm incredibly excited to show what you What is this? The Crash Bandicoot series has always been about finding new and exciting ways to play through the game. In the past, it's been about taking on time trials or discovering all the hidden secrets. Holy shit, this looks well, awesome! For Crash 4, we wanted to bring something brand new to the table. So we teamed up with our friends at Beanox to create a brand new style of play for Crash 4 that we call Inverted Mode. It's our what? souped up, bump a berry fueled take on a mirror mode. Not only are perspective shifted, but now each of the dimensions are rendered in a new and unique art style that really changes the look and feel of the experience. One dimension could be asking you to traverse through a neon wasteland, while another tasks players with spinning paint all over the environment to see their path forward. I'm gonna call this acid you trip mode. One that feels like an old timey movie. I dig it. The overcranked camera speed increasing the actual. Oh speed look, Kurosawa mode as well. Once unlocked, players can know. replay all the game's levels with a totally new and dynamic look and feel. It's an incredibly fun feature that is going to give every player, really cool. especially the completionists out there, a reason Makes it a to lot more replayable. each level again to see what new and exciting experiences in store for them. So that's some of the new stuff that we have in store for you in Crash Bandicoot 4, It's About Time. Experience the space and time-bending madness on October 2nd. That's a good opener. Good stuff. Okay. I want this game. Today's state of play is loaded with third-party updates for PS4 and PSVR, and some new PS5 gameplay too. We open the show with an all-new look at Crash 4. It's about time, coming to PlayStation 4 on October 2nd. Hail. It's about time. Now let's keep the party going Ooh, with the latest from yes. IO Interactive. Yes. Hitman's woefully underrated as a series. And as a fan of stealth games and assassination gameplay, this is it, Chief. And this music, mm, it's very low key. A bit John Wick esque, which I kind of like. Besides, this is your big day. You should Wait, there's a VR mode? Fun. Oh, don't what? Worry about that. My art speaks for itself. Yo, I got a PSVR. Oh, this is interesting. I don't know how well it's going to be implemented, but... Holy shit, that's... This looks dope. This could be really cool if, if done correctly. Oh, do I get to... <laughs> okay. All right. That's play the entire. Oof. Okay. I was not expecting that. Bruh. Bruh. <laughs> okay. Okay, what do we have here? It says not actual gameplay. <laughs> Chat seems pretty hyped too about that. You know, we're off to a good start with this, honestly.
Whoa. Is that a ring? Elden in nature, perhaps? Or am I expecting too much? Nani gore. Looks like some kind of indie title. Whoa, has this Van Gogh vibe to it? Oh, hello. Is this Braid? Whoa. I forgot about this. Anniversary edition. I, I was hoping for a sequel, but what is anniversary edition? We are happy to announce Braid Anniversary Edition. So they re remaster the classic graphics. classic puzzle adventure where you manipulate time, hand repainted for modern high resolutions. Many areas have been re-envisioned to make them more unique, and it's even more like a living painting with brushstrokes animating the world. That, there are more than okay. nine pixels for each pixel in the original game. There are new animations for smoother motion, wow. improved sound and music to enhance the, the graphics. mood, and many hours of developer commentary and interviews on subjects like puzzle design, programming, and visual art. You know, I we never finished this game, most detailed so this could be a good chance for me to ever. delve into it. So if you want to learn how video games are made, Braid Anniversary Edition will be a really good resource. For those who haven't heard of Braid, game when it comes out early next it's year. a platformer where you can at any point rewind time. That's sort of it, its big... Uh, I don't want to say gimmick, but it's the the core mechanic of that game, and it's uh, the pretty cool. The is a mythic adventure set on a mystical ah. island. Indie PS5 Let's take a game. Quick tour in this new footage captured from PS5. Hi everyone, this is Matt Nava from Giant Squid. I'm excited to share more with you today about our upcoming game, The Pathless. Hmm, what is this? The Pathless is an open-world, mythic adventure game set in a vast forest. You play as the hunter. Look at all this gameplay, though. The mm. hunter is a master of archery. She can shoot talismans to fill her dash meter, which allows her to bound across the landscape. Fluid, Whoa. dynamic movement is at the core of The Pathless. So the game's unique take on archery is all about timing, not aiming down sights. This design was hmm. critical to making it possible to shoot even while moving fast and performing acrobatic maneuvers. You instantly feel as skilled as the hunter herself. Good lord, she's fast. Now, what do you do in this game aside from shooting from at... The eagle, uh... You can even fly. The bond between the hunter and the eagle is central in the pathless. Ooh, this is very much, uh... You can gain altitude while you glide by flapping. Breath of the Wild Inspire, which is okay. Yeah, this looks cool, though. I just hope there's more to it than, uh, you know... Shooting at icons. Make sure icons. you pet the eagle to keep it clean and in good flying condition. Is it like a... A bit of, like, a rhythm game where you have to, like... Keep the flow going to keep moving at a certain speed, like a. Hmm. You'll find secrets all over the island if you know where to look. You gotta fight enemies? Collecting crystals will let you upgrade the eagle's ability to flap. Somebody says uh, Captain Walrus has big journey vibes. A little bit. A little bit, yeah. You will also discover larger puzzles to solve in ancient structures. It's definitely got a bit of that visual style, a little bit. I think especially with the protagonist's outfit, that sort of red... ...kind of uh, a cloak or robe or... Oh, we've got, like, I guess, dungeons? Ah, okay. This is all about finding your own way forward. So unlike most open-world games, there's no map. Instead, the hunter wow. can use her mask to peer into the spirit world and discover distant landmarks. It even shows you where you've been. No Getting map. higher vantage points will let you see further with spirit vision. Ah, oh, okay. This could be kind of cool. 
giant cursed spirits, the source of the darkness, will pose a constant threat to you on your quest. They will try to separate you from the eagle. Oh, I guess there are enemies. Ooh. Look at that. Some boss battles. Yeah, very Zelda inspired, it seems. It has its own sort of artistic flair to it. It's got its own unique thing going. It seems. Stay still in the Ooh. light to avoid detection. Wow, that's visually striking. Oh. Huh? What was that noise? Huh. Must have been my imagination. Must have been the wind. You won't be able to take on the cursed spirits until you've returned light to the obelisks. Ooh, okay, I'm intrigued by this game. The more I see of it... When the obelisks are restored, the cursed spirits will be vulnerable. Chase them down through the forest to corner them it's in like a dramatic final battle. a bit Breath of the Wild, a bit Journey, a bit Shadow of the Colossus... A bit Assassin's Creed, I don't know, there's like a, a bunch of different elements. Wow! That's kind of cool. Yeah, it's a bit of a, like... It, it feels like a bit of a rhythm game. Like... Here and there where you have to... Kind of nail those, uh... Icon shooting timings to move fast and keep up. And these boss battles seem to be multi-stage. And they're visually really cool, and they've got like a Zelda vibe, kind of... One phase after another... The type of gameplay. Will have to defeat the cursed spirits to bring light back to the world. I hope you've enjoyed this overview of the Pathless. We've only scratched the surface. There's so much more to explore and discover. The Pathless is coming out later this year. Thanks for watching. Whoa. I might check this out. And they showed plenty of gameplay to boot. Next up, let's see what's in store for Spelunky 2. Ah, Spelunky. Hi, my name is Derek Yu, and I'm the creator of Spelunky. Well, For Spelunky GG. 2, I wanted to make sure we made something that got old fans excited and also brought in new players. F. It was important we didn't change the things that made Spelunky such a unique experience in the first place. So many people became fans of the game through their friends and family, and even strangers on the internet. That's one reason why we're adding online multiplayer, so that more people I've can actually play never the game played together. Spelunky. And I also wanted to include that feeling of community into Spelunky 2 itself to make sure that the game felt welcoming even though it's difficult. In Spelunky 2, when you do runs and discover new characters, you'll also be building an in-game community and family. I designed the world of Spelunky 2 to feel much more rich and dynamic than Spelunky 1. It's going to feel a lot more full. Players will be able to explore and interact with it in lots of new ways. For example, you'll be able to ride turkeys. Okay, sure. Why not? Find hidden passageways. Yeah, I've heard good things about and you'll Spelunky. Have to choose between branching paths as you make your way deeper into the caves. As a result, the stories players create will have much more texture to them. Even after many, many hours of playing, I still have interesting runs that don't even go past the first area. In Spelunky 1, Oof. runs often centered around the shops and how you chose to interact This is a roguelike, right? So in Spelunky 2, we've expanded the shopping experience and made them more nuanced and exciting. And also added new characters that can help you or hinder you. Given how amazing the Spelunky community is, it's hard to say how long it will take to find the deepest secrets. 
but I think the great thing about Spelunky is that the deepest secrets are the ones that even I don't know about. Hmm. And there are lots of new things to play with that I hope players can use to push yeah, past the Yeah, I, I really enjoy roguelikes. the developers know about the game. I have so, um, two types of favorite stories from Spelunky fans. First are when people are genuinely surprised by something that happened in the game. Yeah, like uh, titles like, you know, Binding These of Isaac. Stories I wanted to expand I, I've on put like a hundred something hours into that. They're really what guided my design choices. I After love roguelikes where I knew there was a lot more that could be done with the concept Like you can have the these world. crazy Knowing crazy playthroughs there is what's been from a combination of, of the team. like these in a lot of ways, insane items that players to experience synergize and making it. almost that kind of break the game almost like I, I love stuff like that discover it. A big thanks to the fans who've waited patiently for us to finish Spelunky 2 It's been a long journey but I think it's going to be worth it. Thanks. For those who are just tuning in, by the way, no PS5 announcements in this uh, state of play. Uh, they've confirmed this. Uh, Sony and PlayStation were up front saying mainly focused on third party and VR uh, PS4 titles. So just to set the expectation for those who are just tuning in. We've got a bunch of new PS4 updates. But so far they've shown some cool things. So look at this has not been a bad out. show. At all. Based on, you know, the expectations that they set. Hey, yeah. There's something strange over there. Come on, let's take a look. Ah. Waifu Simulator 2020. Okay, we've got some husbandos as well. What, uh... What game is this again? I forgot the title. It's pretty. I'll give it that. Wow. The waifu game here is, uh... Ideal in death. Yeah, there, 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 there's, there's definitely gonna be waifus involved. For sure. Speak my name. What is this disturbance to which I awaken? <laughs> huh? Think you can get away? The dialogue is very anime. In terms of the, the, the style of performances. Genshin Impact. I'm gonna Google that real quick. Breath of the Waifu. <laughs> uh, uh, let's see who said that. Uh, Garth Don. Tales of Waifu. <laughs> waifu of the Wild. Wow, you could really run. Yeah. You could run with this. Whoa. It's a beat em up with a really cool art style. Go all out or go home, Emperor. A bit, yeah, very sci fi, a bit cyberpunky. Bit Tron like. Wow, the art style. I'm really digging for this. And the music. It's got that uh, synthy electronic. Aeon must die. Okay. That's cool. Oh, it was announced for Switch some time back. Okay, this is definitely cyberpunk. 
like full on. Like a, like a, an indie cyberpunk title. Ah, it's got this very... It almost looks 2.5D, like the character looks pixelated, almost, like a 16-bit like a character living in this, like, 3D world that's stylized, sort of texture-wise, after 16-bit. Whoa, what's this? Man, I love the indie, indie scene, the fact that they can just produce uh, such interesting looking and unique sort of experiences. Ano muta mutation. It's time to talk bug snacks. Let's check oh, out some God, gameplay no. footage captured from PS5. Oh, My not bug snacks. Is open. This game creeps me out. On the island oh no. Oh, wow. wait. That's your new lead? Another monster hunt? Elizabeth Megafig is a two bit con artist! Don't tell me you actually believe this half baked nonsense! I swear, if you chase this bug snack story, you're out of a job! You're the journalist! <laughs> okay. You said you'd be coming. There's a bug snack right over there. Do me a favor and take my snack trap. Uh, stranger, I could use your help. This bunger goes wild for ketchup. Use it to lead the bunger over yonder. Another settlement needs your help. To use that journalistic instinct to find out what my favorite. Bug this game's is. so weird. And feed it to me, Obs. How's my little sprout doing? He misses Papa. Oh, of course he does. Well, so. I have a few prototype traps that I could put to use. You're pretty good at stuff, and nobody hates you yet. This is Tax so. Bugs. So this is and Elder Scrolls. If everything was food and animals, well, <laughs> I don't know, man. So you do find these bug snacks and make it back alive. You just might keep your job. Now get going and try not to fall off a cliff. Okay, this is a very different vibe from what I saw last time. What the fuck is this game? What? There's a mix of emotions right now. I, I don't know how to feel. Store. Let's start with an update on an eagerly awaited PlayStation VR game. Ooh, I'm waiting for the whole series to be released because this is episodic and the episodes are really short, which I don't like. Is wrong with you. Given the price they're charging. But the core mechanics are cool for a VR game. You must stop I, I play this on Quest. Oculus Quest. Okay. Power! Unlimited power! If I can have unlimited power, I might just be convinced to get that title. Whatever you do, stay in the light. Nunny. Ooh, 505 games. Remedy. Oh, it's Control! I have not played Control yet. I probably should. I've seen gameplay tidbits, and it apparently it's bonkers. Narratively, and I hear the gameplay is pretty good. But, I, like, narratively, I think is what... Like, the, the narrative of the game is what uh, has caught a lot of attention. But also, there are a lot of interesting gameplay elements, like supernatural powers that you can use. You can fly and fling shit. Like you got like psychic powers. Expansion too? Oh, this is we're already on the second expansion. Wow. OK. 
Okay, huh. This is less compelling than previous showings. Yeah, I know Control has won a couple, like, a number of Game of the Years uh, from various outlets. Um, people who've played it generally have positive sentiments about it. Like the chat right now, a lot of uh, people really encouraging me to check it out. I might just do that when it comes to Steam. It's on Epic right now, and uh, I don't know. I'm not one to buy games on Epic personally. I prefer Steam and its features. So yeah, what was that game? I totally missed it. Auto chess, some people seem to be saying in the chat. Okay, what do we have here? So instead of Toy Story, this is Sign Story. Okay, it's like a... Yeah, more of a puzzle game. Nunny. Pedestrian coming to PS4 January 2021. So yeah, plenty of titles coming to PS4. PS4 has uh, over 110 million now let's um, take a look at two new games headed players to PS5. on it, so it'd be crazy to just not release games shadows. on the platform. Running silently between the straight, cold lines of a corrupt state. What is this? They count, ration, manipulate. There's a wolf in the night and he's talking. They've taken everything from those they claim to protect. Authority and steel will not stop us. We aren't an invading army. It seems vaguely familiar. I feel like I've seen this game, but... We are wraiths. Bypass defenses and strike at the heart. I don't know if I'm just like not remembering a game I've already seen or if this is actually a new title. Oh, wait, is it? Whoa, that was very Assassin's Creed esque. Hidden Blade. I don't think this is Assassin's Creed. And the people call us heroes. From the day. To others, we are rivals. Is this like a, a competitive assassination game? Hmm. We are all outlaws. Hood, outlaws and legends. Yeah, seems uh, like a... a 4v4 legends cooperative slash competitive like assassin's creed like type of thing i don't know could be interesting temtem basically uh indie pokemon and apparently a lot of people are intrigued by uh, its systems and the fact that like it, it seems to actually be striving for more than what Pokemon has lately. Like a lot of people seem to be kind of disappointed with Pokemon as of late because it doesn't feel like they're making enough strides. Whereas Temtem seems like it's something really new and fresh and like the multiplayer is really cool. The fact that you can, like, legit just meet up with people and... It, yeah, it's straight up just an online world. Where you can catch the Temtem, the Pokemon, and, uh... Battle and trade and all these things. 
before we wrap up, let's take a tour of Godfall. We've got new PS5 gameplay for this melee-focused action epic launching this holiday. Something I heard about this game is that it's not going to be actually a live service. That's what the developer said. So, like, no microtransactions from what I heard? Yeah, Hello. Godfall won't have My microtransactions. Name is Keith Lee, and I am the game director. Which for I'm Godfall. surprised by. On behalf of Counterplay Games, in a good we way. are very excited to share gameplay with you today and to offer you a glimpse into the mystical world of Godfall. Today, you'll be seeing extensive gameplay captured on a PlayStation 5 development kit. Please keep in mind that the game is still a work in progress, and some things may change from the final product as we continue to learn and harness the power of Sony's next generation console. They call this Please a looter enjoy. slasher. So let's jump right into what Godfall is. They're showing so much gameplay in this. Is a looter I love slasher it. That features intense action, satisfying moment to moment combat, and robust loot progression systems. You can enjoy the game at your own pace, playing alone, or through online co-op with up to two additional teammates. Godfall is set in a brand new high fantasy universe filled with heroic knights, arcane magic, and forbidden realms. The world is split up into the elemental realms of earth, water, air, and fire. So, Godfall is a complete package. avatar. All That's cool. gear in the game are acquired or unlocked through gameplay. But did there everything no change? Microtransactions. Oof. No waiting for content. It's all in the game on day one. Hell yes. I like the sound of that. As you adventure, you'll get to tear through enemies to challenge a mad god who awaits you at the top. But did everything change you when the Fire Nation attacked? Knight, a godlike warrior able to equip valor plates legendary armor sets that transform you into an unstoppable master of melee combat. Throughout your journey, you'll find ancient valor plates lost in time, each with their own characteristics and long history. Now let's talk about gameplay in Godfall. First, our team wanted to do something different. We wanted to combine action RPG loot progression with third-person melee combat to create what we think is a looter slasher. Hmm. No microtransactions the game is already has me. One part gear-driven and one part player skill. Significantly more intriguing. In other words, about not only do we want you to find exquisite weapons with powerful loot traits, but we also want you to have that feeling of accomplishment for mastering the wide set of combat mechanics available to you in Godfall. Okay, accomplishment From a is fine. Philosophy perspective, Just don't say pride and accomplishment. In Godfall is intended to be fluid, dynamic, and interactive, embracing offense over defense. More often than not, you'll be facing multiple enemies at the same time. As a result, you should always be moving and closing the gap on enemies. Also, you dominate the combat space, not the enemies, and the game rewards you for being aggressive. It's in large part going to come down now to how good the combat the feels. Combat philosophy, let's dig into the weapons themselves. In Godfall, there are five weapon classes. The longsword, the dual blades, Ooh, so that seems more my speed. The polearm, the two-handed warhammer, and the two-handed greatsword. And gun. Each weapon class has their own unique movesets and play styles, ranging from fast combos to more strategic, deliberate play. As you defeat enemies in your adventures, you will acquire numerous weapons for each weapon category, each weapon with their own primary and secondary traits. At a later date, we will delve into the weapon classes and how to modify them in greater detail. This for looks now, all right. I just hope we'll go uh... over the dual blades and the longsword weapon classes. Like the combat has a lot the of blades are the fastest techniques weapon class and moves. In Godfall, embodying speed, fluidity, and mobility. The dual blades are exceptional against soft, unarmored targets or single targets. You can perform a combo by executing four consecutive light attacks. The dual blades heavy attack is a spinning blade cyclone. The blade cyclone can also be used as a finisher at the end of your light attack combo. 
So what are the signature moves for the dual blades? As you build up charge, you can also activate inner focus, which is unique to the dual blades, which inflicts massive damage in a short period of time. There's also mortal coil, where you can throw your blade into an enemy, pulling mm. an enemy towards you, like okay. pulling a cable. Now let's switch to the longsword weapon class. Longswords are balanced weapons, embodying crisp. Wow, they're showing a lot of gameplay for this. cooldowns without needing a lot of elaborate combo setups. Similar to dual blades, longswords have their own four-hit light attack combo. Then there's the heavy attack finisher, which can be used at the end of your light attack combo. There are three signature moves for the longsword class. There's Spectral Flurry, which cannot be interrupted and deals high damage to multiple nearby targets. Then there's Spiral Technique, which eviscerates all enemies in a straight fixed path. This reminds Notice me there's of... a white flash after a longsword like... swing called a timing attack. If you press the shield button exactly at the same time, you'll perform a devastating shield uppercut with your longsword. Like if Destiny 2's the melee combat was turned into a whole Godfall. game within itself, like it's that's kind of what it feels like. Throughout the entire game, you can always block incoming attacks with your shield. Oh God, some of the quality. Press the shield button at the right time. You can all. Sorry about that. Two seconds. There we go. If you press the shield button at the right time, you can also parry an attack. You can perform a light attack after a last second shield block to counterattack with a powerful shield strike. The shield is great not just for defense, but also offense. You can aim and throw your shield, which will hit multiple nearby targets. If hmm. you tap the shield button just as you catch your shield, you can perform a powerful wave attack. You can double tap the shield button to petrify enemies. And of course, you can perform an R3 ground finisher on enemies that were knocked down to the ground. Hmm. Yeah, I think this game will uh, live or die by how good its combat is. And I guess, like, how good the, the reward loop is. Like how they, how the loot mechanic and the loot system is handled. So it feels like you're constantly making progression and... Well, the combat looks decent. It, it looks alright. Could use maybe a little more impact. I think the sound effects is what needs a little more just umph to it, especially. Like when he slashes his sword around, there isn't much in the way of uh, tactile sound. Like the slashing sounds are kind of soft, I don't know, maybe it's just me. We the game hope does. you enjoyed our first walkthrough video of Godfall running on the PlayStation 5. We also want to thank all the it fans does look pretty. for endless support like, since our initial review. In terms back of vistas, we have a few more surprises coming down the road, such as details on loot and progression, and are eager to share more with you on our way to launch this holiday season. We hope that you will join our Godfall community on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. Has a cool Thank art you. style, I think, an art direction that I think is kind of appealing. It looks okay. Like I don't have to play it. I have to play it to really determine whether it's it's uh, for me. Now this is also coming out on PC, so it's not like a PS5 exclusive. We hope you enjoyed this peek into the future of PlayStation. See you next time. Okay. All right. So, in terms of like what I got based on what they said we would get i actually thought we got a little more than i thought we were gonna get um it was less low-key than i thought it was gonna be uh and, and we got to see some cool stuff um and they showed a lot of gameplay which i think is super important and i like the godfall demo i know people have their thoughts and opinions on it but 
I can respect the fact that they went full out and like showed us the game uh, and, and gave us a rundown of the systems and the combat and like gave us a good idea for what this game's going to play like so that we can actually make an informed decision and, you know, provide feedback. So big plus on that front and just about every game. We didn't see much in the way of like CGI trailers, really. Every game had a substantial amount of gameplay to like put out there and that I deeply appreciated. And so let's, let's see, what do we... Yeah, Crash looked really, really good. Hitman 3 VR was surprising, and I'm totally into that. Braid Remastered looks all right. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying uh, what I'm seeing of this, uh, the Pathless game, sort of this Breath of the Wild-inspired indie title. Um, yeah, and then, yeah, a couple of other indie stuff here and there, and then the big closer was... Oh, Bucksnax! <laughs> Oh man, uh, Buck Snacks! Wow, I, I I don't know what to make of this game anymore. The first trailer was like all happy-go-lucky with weird music. Now it's it, like it, it almost went for like a like a darker, more sarcastic tone, and 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 they showed a bit of gameplay, and it like it had some like Elder Scrolls vibes to it, but in a weird setting. Like I don't know. Uh, so there's that. Um, so that's Buck Snacks. We got the the VR uh, Star Wars game. Uh, this is what, what was this? Uh, ch -ch -ch. Auto Chess. Okay, I've never played Auto Chess, hence my ignorance of this title. Um, and then Pedestrian. Uh, we got this interesting co-op or, or competitive like uh, action game that also puts a lot of emphasis on stealth from the looks of it it has some like assassination elements <clears throat> a look at temtem and then finally the big godfall showcase which was substantial um so a pretty solid showing i would say honestly uh, i know it, it wasn't the the biggest of reveals and stuff like that but again like sony and playstation set the expectations and what they delivered here was just a solid showcase of gameplay of upcoming titles and a lot of the stuff that i saw here looks pretty interesting and uh intriguing at the very least with godfall being sort of the big closer with me being in wait and see mode for this but the fact that it doesn't have microtransactions appeals to me greatly like i'm surprised that this isn't some kind of live service um the art direction looks cool the combat could use some work in terms of impact but it doesn't look like the worst thing i've seen or anything it looks okay it looks all right but i have to actually get my hands on it and see uh how rewarding the the loot loop feels and so that my general take is yeah not bad at all. I, I'm I, I'm I'm pretty pleased overall. So uh, yeah. Oh, a Aeon. Yeah, Aeon Must Die is actually among the titles that really visually at least impressed me. Um. So that's that. That's my take. Yeah, I I, I I'm leaving pleased honestly. Obviously not like blown away, but that wasn't the intent of state of play. It wasn't. Uh, this state of play wasn't intent on, you know, announcing the biggest titles. Yeah, I wish I would have seen Elden Ring, but uh, that title's an enigma. Like, who knows when we're going to see it? But, you know, I say let them take however much time they need to take before they can show us proper gameplay, right? So uh, I don't mind waiting a little bit and, and ensuring that they got all their everything in order before they, they, they're ready to really blow this thing wide open. So, yeah. Um... Oh, and there's, of course, uh, uh, Breath of the Waifu. Game of the Decade. Also known Act 3, so 0 out of 10. Okay. So that rounds up everything I have to say about this. Thank you for tuning in, folks. Uh, I'm glad uh, you, you hung out with me. Um, I just love uh, streaming with you guys. So, And thousands of you tuning in is, is just very humbling, really just something I appreciate and all the contributions you guys are making um, in terms of uh, like the super chats or just like commenting here and, and staying engaged in conversation. That means more than you know. So, you know, uh, yeah, let's call it there. Uh, thank you for tuning in, folks. With that, I will see you guys next time. Yong out. <laughs>